Hey, internet friends. How you doing? How you doing? Hey, internet friend. This is Magic Brad with the Magic Brad Show. Just like it says right there. Dun dun dun. So I've got a, a guest on. Him and I have been. Uh, we did an interview, and now we've got this series that's going on, and this is uh, one of three. And I'm going to bring him on here right now. His name is Michael Helmkey. And he is the digital concierge. Let me bring him on right now. Here he is. There he is. Hey, Hi, Michael. Brad. How are you? Wonderful. It's chilly today in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Chilly, it's so it's that. freezing? No. Chilly, so it's 80? Oh, stop it. You're, you're here, too, so it's not freezing. You know what freezing <laughs> Freezing was the Super Bowl when I was here. Were you in, did you get outside then? I started a car at five in the morning when it was 20 below outside before wind chill, and I survived. And I'm from California, so it was awesome. Well, at least it started. It sure did. Are, are, you, are you originally from California? Yeah, I'm originally from California. I'm a recent transplant here. I think I should have known that. I love the weather oh. and the climate and the people and everything about it. Twin we Cities do have Minnesota nice. nice. We do have Minnesota nice. <laughs> You know, so today stuff. we're going to talk about lead generation. Um, I don't do these these videos very long because I know that people have that commodity of time. So I try and keep them around like 15, 20, 25 minutes if I can. So we'll just jump right into it. I want to talk a little bit about lead generation. And specifically, we're now talking about people in the event industry. And, you right. know, because of COVID, a lot of people have been affected by it. But the event industry is kind of like stopped. And what happens with that? is all the businesses that are event related, they're like done. And I think I shared with you earlier, it's like you got the event venue, the event venue has to close down. And that means then the event planner doesn't have a job and all the resources and vendors that the event planner brought in, the entertainers, the staging, the lighting, the limousine services, catering, floors, right. all that stuff, it's like done. So a lot of these suppliers are needing some help and some of them kind of just like, okay, I can't do anything. I'll just stop. That's not the right thing to do. you got to keep the ball rolling with all this. And that's where the digital concierge comes in to keep people uh, top of mind. While that's right. Break. Now, what is the breakdown that you're seeing? I mean, you, you've been doing a lot of events for years. What's the breakdown you're seeing of opportunities for virtual events right now versus future planned in-person real events? Well, there are no in-person real events, and right. when they do right. happen, it can be so weird. You know, there everybody's got to be like I saw some videos of it of a concert, and they had everybody in these little, uh, uh, not uh, like boxes. Like, yeah, little boxes that were all like right. ten feet apart, and uh, they had little rails around them, so everybody, little families, can stand their little hutches and stuff. But still, when people are breathing and all that, that blows around in the wind so i don't know if that's safe or not right, but right. people are going to be separated by plexiglass and all that stuff and it's just not going to be the same and it's not here yet anyways so people are doing the the zooms and the digital thing doing digital events but sometimes they just don't know exactly how to work them like i'll, I'll use an example like uh we did our little magic meeting and sometimes those things are voice activated so mm -hmm. when a magician is doing an effect and then all of a sudden someone says, hey, and does something or they drop a pencil and all of a sudden the image changes, they miss the magic trick. Right, <laughs> right. So it's right. a different world now with this virtual stuff. So they need to understand it. But just generally speaking, the lead generation, you still need to generate leads and communicate with these people. And we'll get into that next Monday when we talk about relationships but right now. We need to know how do you generate leads? How do you find these these people that are going to be planning virtual events or live events in the future? Right, right. Well, it's really, in my world, there's basically the two things. There's the searching and finding them and making sure that your online profile is professional when they find you, like you have the right LinkedIn profile or you have not even a website, you don't need a website for any of this stuff, but you have a simple landing page where it's basically an online business card where it can talk about you and makes you reachable. There's a contact form, people can leave you messages, stuff like that. So that can be really simple, but 
you know, the, the first bit is finding where these elusive professional event planners live. What, what do you search for? Where do you find them? What are they looking for? Um, and, and so, you know, there's, there's a lot of strategies to that. You, you were talking to me earlier when we were preparing for this about some of the organizations that are event planner related. Um, there's certainly searches you can do on Facebook. There's searches you can do on LinkedIn for your friendly neighborhood corporate event planner and so forth. Um, what's in your experience with, with higher end events with running expos and things, what are the corporate event planners really looking for? Um, I think one of the first things they're looking for is, is dependability, professionalism, because with an event, you only get one chance to do it. You know, there's my one, there's my finger I'm trying to get my finger in the screen there. <laughs> There's only one chance to do it. See how this is different? If I was standing on a stage, everybody could see it in a, in a 180 degree. But this is, you know, I got to do this in a right. box here. Yes. Um, dependability. They need, they need to know that a person is going to be experienced and that you can depend on them. They're not going to drop an F-bomb on the stage when the CEO right. is there. They need to be assured of that kind of thing. So that's one of the main things. And is that person going to show up? You know, mm -hmm. they're going to be there. Like with the Zoom thing, um, now it's a whole nother world for the the meeting planner. Does this vendor, when they're going to come on and do like a, a entertainment section for this corporate event, are they going to is this this uh, supplier going to have good enough bandwidth to make it a good experience for the people that are watching it? Right. Or if it's a speaker or something, are they going to have sufficient lighting for if someone can see the PowerPoint? Do they have enough knowledge to? You, you've been to an event where someone just doesn't know how to hook up the PowerPoint with the computer. Mm -hmm. Right. That doesn't right. look good. It doesn't work good. It takes time. And usually when they're doing an event, there's the timing for that. So definitely that's one of the things that the event planners are going to be concerned about is professionalism. So like you, you alluded to with your LinkedIn profile, is that done professionally? Or mm -hmm. are you, do you have like a Facebook page and that's what you're running all this off. And that Facebook page is connected to your, your Facebook profile. When that event player comes there, and they find out that you're like a, a weekend warrior doing tequila shots, and then they want to hire you for this event. <laughs> you know, you want to keep that personal life maybe out of the professional life. So maybe right. it's better for you to do your marketing and stuff and drive them to LinkedIn where it doesn't have your personal stuff. But un understand that that event planner is going to be looking for that kind of stuff. Yes, yes, they are. And, and so that really points to specializing. And so in this, in this series, we're talking about getting booked for events, whether they're virtual or live. And there may be a whole bunch of things that you can do, but for this to work best, it behooves you to really specialize and consider taking your, let, let's just talk about LinkedIn, taking your LinkedIn profile and making it more specialized towards your expertise as it relates to events. And let's say we're talking online. So you're gonna talk about how the, the kinds of events you've done before, what sort of topics you're comfortable speaking about if you're a speaker, include some links to other video work you've done. If you don't have any, you know, start creating a portfolio of, of videos you're either making on YouTube or Facebook or LinkedIn that really show you in a professional light. So again, they, videos that show you've got the lighting, you've got the sound, you've got the right confidence before the camera. Um, and those don't have to be really complicated or long, but people wanna know that you're real. And so as much background information as you can provide as far as a portfolio is good. And you could do that entirely through your Facebook business page or your LinkedIn account. Um, and that's all, that's, you know, that's pretty straightforward. But the main thing is thinking about the specialization and making it making it clear that what they're looking for is what you do. So if you're going after event planners, you're going after event planners. You're gonna you're gonna specialize that way in how you present yourself online. Yeah, and that makes a good point too, because uh, you know specializing in something, the event planner's got something in mind. Even though, say for example, you're a, you're an entertainer and maybe you do children's shows, 
they're not looking for that. So the, your information that's on your landing page or on your LinkedIn profile or whatever, it needs to be relevant to what that corporate person is looking for. And you run into this too, because the independent planner, you know, a, a corporate planner that works for Cargill, Medtronic, 3M, Honeywell, General Mills, they are corporate planners, but the independent planner will hire people for doing a corporate event but they're also available because they probably do weddings. They might help people with family reunions. They might do uh, fundraisers and, and gala celebrations, auctions and things like that. That event planner has a spectrum of things that they're capable of doing, but it, it might not necessarily be what, you know, what your expertise is. So all that stuff right. has to be relevant. Um, I use the analogy of if you're marketing, you know, hot dogs, hamburgers, and steaks, and you're, marketing to vegans and vegetarians, there's not going to be a match. Mm -hmm. So you make sure that that profile and then the landing page for when people opt in. I was going to bring in another thing too, that uh, when you got that landing page that people might opt in their email address and their uh, phone number, they might be a little hesitant of doing that because they don't want to get calls from people. And even if uh, my experience has been too, that when I'm doing the expos and things, Companies, I, I know their name because I've been doing this for a long time, but they opt in with a Gmail address and they do that because they don't want to mm. get corporate spam email and stuff. So you might look at the Gmail and think, you know, um, Buffy964. <laughs> and you might think, well, that's not even a lead, but it might be Peggy Howard from Pillsbury Corporation, you know? <laughs> right. Right. So well, and that just points to the need to follow up with all the leads you get. At least yes. say hi, acknowledge, acknowledge them, ask them questions. Don't try and sell them on what you do, but maybe ask them how they found you, what are what sort of events are they running, things like that. Try and engage in a conversation and see if you can get them talking. I was gonna look on here and see if I could find somebody that's any leaving any comments on here. It's not showing up on here, but uh, if anybody has any questions, we can always look at this later and then follow up with it. Right. And if, uh, if you just happened upon this and you're not in the uh, Eventbrite list, because we're going to be sending out emails about the other uh, videos and such. And I wanted to put your little uh, banner thing on so people know how to get a hold of you, Michael. Oh, thank you. Yes. That's how you get a hold of the digital concierge. I think that's really fitting too with the event industry because hotels all have concierge. And I'll tell you a quick little lead generation story. Um, uh, way, way back, um, there was Henderson Limousine. And he used to do these uh, concierge parties all the time. And it was very, very smart marketing because he connected with all the different concierge from all the hotels because his limousine service, people come to town, they get to the hotel and they go to the concierge and say, hey, what's going on in town tonight, right? So John Henderson made sure to do these little parties all the time and invite all these hospitality people and all the concierge. So that was sort of his lead generation was he was using these concierge to be a liaison into getting the business for that. So that's pretty smart marketing in that case. That is very smart. You can do something a little bit similar on LinkedIn if you are strategic with who you connect with. Now you can go out and find a bunch of event planners. They're searchable generally. You can think about what, what business titles they may have and search for all the people in your area like that. And you could send them all friend requests or connection requests, but if you find that you know common people between you, ask for an introduction. So if you if you have uh, if you're connected with other people in your niche in your whether it's speaking, entertaining, tech, whatever that could be related to event planning, see if you have common connections between your ideal event planner and those people because you may be able to ask them to introduce you, and that's always an easier in than just going in cold. So there's a lot that can be said for looking at the kinds of LinkedIn connections you have and really specializing them towards either your peers who may be getting gigs doing events or other event planners just to broaden your network in that area. The internet is an interesting area like that too because, um, you know, 
when you go on to LinkedIn, I'll, I'll give a little tip that I learned and that's what I use for the event expo is CMP stands for certified meeting professional. So that's the little acronym that they use for their credit accreditation for being an event planner. And you can go into LinkedIn and just type in that and it's going to pull up all sorts of, of uh, certified meeting professionals, these CMPs. And then rather than um, connecting with them, which is kind of invasive and uh, sometimes it's an uh, intrusion, I just go on their page and then move on to the next one because they'll get a little alert that said so and so and such and such was on your profile. And then they look at you and if in your profile it says professional entertainer or corporate florist or caterer, and that way they come to you as opposed to you pushing your agenda on them. They'll connect with you and say, hey, I see you're in the event industry and I'm a corporate event planner and I'm always looking to fill my resource files. Mm -hmm. So it's just a different way of generating leads rather than blatantly, you know how people are. <laughs> that's, a, that's a really good tip. There, there are a lot of things like that that you can do which are, are very soft touches mm -hmm. and let you sort of gradually enter their sphere of knowledge or awareness. Similarly, if you find an event planner who is more active on LinkedIn, maybe they're posting, and this works on Facebook as well. If they're posting, if they are if they do have a social media program, like and comment their posts because they'll see you doing that. And again, you're, you're doing something positive their way versus just making your pitch. Ideally, you don't want to go in and say, hey, I'm really cool, hire me. That That's annoying after a while. We get those messages all the time. People appreciate well, subtlety. You know, I'll give, I'll give a shameless plug for myself. That's why I do these <laughs> kind of things because I can create a conversation with people like you and now it's not you all pushing your own agenda. It's me kind of endorsing. Right. We did an interview before this, before sort of a, a qualification. Otherwise, I wouldn't allow, let you get on my audio. <laughs> but the, the, the third party endorsement, I think, is very important. And like you'd mentioned, uh, LinkedIn is great for that. But it, it also works good for even platforms like Facebook or all these things mm -hmm. like that when you're not. Uh, I mean, I get it all the time. Please like my page. Who are you? <laughs> yeah, th those don't turn me on anymore. But it works on Facebook as well. Ask your network, ask the people you know, do you know anyone like this? Do you know any event planners? Do you know anyone who is at this company in event planning? Because you might be surprised and find out that you already know someone. And that's, that's just the power of networking. And just because a lot of us are not going out much anymore or shaking people's hands, networking is still possible even online. Um, it's a lot of one-on-one -on -one conversations and it's a lot of ask asking favors for, can you introduce me to someone? but it's it's still a very powerful thing. Well, there's a lot of little groups. In fact, this video is on one of my Minnesota event professionals group. And then there's the Twin Cities Wedding and Event Professionals. And there's a lot of groups and things that you can connect, but you can't just go in there and start pushing your thing. It's just, uh, <laughs> you, you know, it's weird how the online world is so different than the, the regular world. Because if you went to a networking event and you just started shoving your card in front of everybody, it, it it's very tacky and you you notice that in real life but they don't realize that that's what's happening on the online well, it's it's just as tacky online but you're right people don't notice it because it's more anonymous but the the rate of success for being that tacky is about as poor i think for in person versus online well it's it's even worse because people will block you mhm mm because mm -hmm. and once they do that you're like cut off. It's like you don't right. go to that networking event no more because you've been blacklisted. Right, right. Yeah, and that, and that 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 negativity travels. Mm -hmm. So before we go, I mean, I don't. We're only into this almost twenty minutes. Right. But could you share a couple of uh, like digital methods of actually capturing the leads and getting the contacts rather than letting them float around on social media. How can you kind of get them into your arena, into your email list? into right. your, even your groups and things on social media. Right. Um, from the technology side, which isn't interesting to most folks, but I'll start there. Um, a landing page works. So that's a single, a single page website that has basically your headline, your subheadline, some information about you. Basically, you're trying to 
generate interest in whoever lands there for the thing you do, what makes you different, what makes it appealing, and you'll have a contact form there so people can sign up. Now, you can also do this from your, your social media profile. If you have an about section that talks about what you do and why it's pertinent to those people, to event planners, say, and information on how to contact you. Um, you can do things like get a free Calendarly account and hook it up for booking and scheduling calls. You can use a free Google form, a link to a Google form to capture um, sign up information. If people want to know more, they can go there. Um, you can even create a disposable email address and put it out there in public and people can email you that way. There's all kinds of ways of getting contacts. Which um, brings uh, brings up another point, and we had talked a little bit about it because we ran into the situation like, how do I get a hold of you? Am I going to contact you on Facebook? Am I going to contact you on LinkedIn? Am I going to send you an email? So you, you need to almost sort of put a stake in the ground of where, how do people get a hold of you? Are they going to call right. you? Are they going to text you? Are they going to email you? It can't be all of them because sometimes you're not on that platform, and if someone contacts you and you don't answer, you're not going to get the gig. That's right. That's right. So that's right. It's important to show, to tell people how to reach you, what the best next step is. And this is true really with all marketing. Every little piece of marketing and outreach you do, make it simple for the person who's receiving your message or anything like that. Make it simple for them to know what you want them to do next. Do you want a call? Do you want a letter? Do you want a fax? Hopefully not but just make it make it simple so they know what to do. And, and again, small asks are better than big asks. When you're reaching out to someone, if you're reaching out to someone, don't ask them to hire you in the first message. That's like asking them to marry you on the first date. You wanna see, is there compatibility? Are they even looking for the kind of person that you are? And maybe you go in asking, hey, I know you're doing a lot of events. Do you know any other event planners who are interested in this? So you're not even asking them. You're asking them for a tiny favor. You know, could you could you point me in the right direction? Because it might be that they say, yeah, that's that's me. I need that right now. But you never know till you ask. And an indirect ask is is sometimes friendlier. That's a good point. Instead of asking them for the money, say, do you know anybody else that's got any money? <laughs> <laughs> Basically, yes. <laughs> well, Michael, we're at uh, 23 minutes here, so I'm going to close this off. And if anybody's that's got any questions, like I said, they can either uh, ask the questions in the feed that you're in there, and we'll check that. And there's uh, one. This is your domain name. If you want to contact Michael, it's right there. That's how you can do that. And then next week, we're going to be talking more about the relationship building, which is an interesting element because, in my opinion, generating leads is not all that tough. They're all over out there. Right. But you got to build that relationship, and that takes some time to get the, uh, you know, the Democrats and the Republicans and <laughs> these different <laughs> variables before you can get that relationship to be congruent and peaceful and all. Yes. So, I appreciate again taking the time. I will get this beamed up to YouTube and propagate it out to the people that uh, may be tuned in late. And then Very good. We'll you all next week. Yep. Have a great week. Talk to you Perfect. soon. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, boys and berries. Appreciate you taking the time. Like we had mentioned, we're going to be doing this again next week. And then the week after that, we're going to be talking about closing the sale. So this uh, episode was about lead generation. Next week is going to be about relationship building, and the last one is about closing the sale. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. Peace, love, and happiness. This is Magic Red signing off. Enjoy the rest of your day. Be well, be safe, and be nice.